And welcome to episode 63 of the Techno Buffalo Show. I'm one of your two hosts for today, Sean Ani, editor in chief of Techno Buffalo. I'm joined by deputy managing editor Todd Hazelton. Hey, everybody. How are you doing today, Todd? I'm good. Yes, we, we missed last week, unfortunately, folks. It was just, it was crazy busy. And then we had an unexpected being shorthanded. And it was just a ton of things. So we do apologize for missing last week. But that means we have that much more to talk about this week. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about. Because, you know, the best time to send out an invitation for your big event is a <laughs> Friday evening. It's a Friday night. At 4.30 Pacific. Yeah. So there's like one time zone of people left writing for uh -huh. 30 minutes. Yeah. Very weird. And that, we're talking about Google. <laughs> that was the oddest choice of a time to release an invitation. Yeah, it was last Friday. Um, thankfully, we have guys in the in the California office and they wrote the story but Sean and I weren't around it was 6 30 7 30 our times and Google sends out an invite and now typically you know maybe during the week one of us will be around uh, at that time or at least nearby but on a Friday night it's just like I mean who is like who do they think is around well you messaged me I had just gotten off the treadmill and uh -huh. you messaged me and you're like I'm trying to get an invite I'm like what's going on <laughs> all I did was get on the treadmill <laughs> yeah it's like what and we are invited um so we will be there yes, yes we will it be there is, and so uh, we will be seeing... funny because wait i uh, know i'm pl sorry please finish no it's just a. I feel like if you're trying to make news or get in headlines you know you want it to be in front of everybody you, you announce it when both coasts are available right well there's actually in mainstream media the best time to release bad news is considered around that time yeah, that makes sense. Because then it gets buried in the weekend. Or or when Apple's announcing something. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> it gets buried. Yeah. So Google's choice of that time by normal media standards is extremely odd. Mm -hmm. And by our tech standards, it's extremely odd. But yeah. whatever it is, we got the invite. We will be there. But uh, so we're going to see two phones. I still have not memorized which is which <laughs> uh the rumors are the nexus 5x which which is lg and then that those naming those names came up like right around last week too i think yeah um, and then the 6p which is allegedly made by huawei so the 6p is supposed to be the the flagship of the two um i think the uh the 5x has like a snapdragon 6 something in it as opposed to the rumored 820, Snapdragon 820 in the 6P. So, you know, we'll see what the prices come in at and if there's like a real big sacrifice that you're making besides like some flagship specs between the two. Because it'd be really great if you get, you know, an awesome experience at a lower price for the 5X, as long as they're not taking too much out. Well, um, so those are the rumors for the two phones. Here's what I find odd about the 5X. The, the Nexus line has always been a developer's tool, essentially. It was never intended to be a, you know, consumer product. Well, I think last year that started to change, but right, yeah, it was never originally sort of for... So if they're releasing a mid-range phone, the question is either A, are they finally accepting that this is a consumer product? Mm -hmm. Or B, are they trying to give a tool to developers for developing countries? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, there's both. I don't know that they're <clears throat> chasing emerging markets. <clears throat> Excuse me, because they do have, you know, lower cost phones. What is it? Android. Uh, Android One. Android One for emerging markets. Um, and I don't know that the pricing of the 5X is going to be that cheap. You know, I think it's going to be like probably... 300 bucks minimum mm -hmm. and I don't think that's emerging market pricing <clears throat> Excuse right. me, where you're looking at like 150 bucks, but I think it is a sign that they're moving towards the consumer space again uh, Last year we had the Nexus 9 Which very much seemed like a consumer play it was sold in Best Buy and stuff like that <clears throat> Sorry guys I have a frog in my throat. Okay, and then you also have um, his name is Jimmy Yeah, and then you also have project Phi, which sort of is just taking off, but it's open to the public. It doesn't really have much to do with developers at all, right? It's just right, like right. enthusiasts. 
And if these both support Project Fi, and I think they will, then all of a sudden now you've got three phones that support Project Fi. You've got choice. I think that's a big consumer play. Um, and I don't think I had a chance to really talk about it, but I used Project Fi a lot in Europe when I was there, and I really, really liked it. So I'm excited to see whether one of these phones, probably the 5X, I'm not sure I need a flagship, um, so close to buying the 6S Plus, which I just did. I pre-ordered it. But... Um, I'm, I'm interested in the 5X. Now, you know, I hadn't even thought about this, so you just mentioned it. We have not heard any rumors of a new tablet this year. Yeah, no, I, and we I was going through prepping our posts as we usually do ahead of time, sort of uh, getting things ready just in case Google announces they were ready to go with, with some sort of post. Um, and, and there's nothing in the land of tablets that we've heard about. Now, they could surprise us. But you'd think that rumors would have popped up by now that suggest, you know, maybe something's coming. Right. Um, but you really haven't seen anything. Right. I mean, and we have heard, you know, the rumors of the Chromecast and whatever this audio streamer is that we've been hearing rumors about. Right. But, yeah, there's been no rumors of a new tablet. Yeah, the other thing is that I was thinking, in the past, it's really, these events have been totally different. Sometimes they'll dive into other things like photos or maybe maps. Or something, at least on the mobile side, you know, maybe they'll talk about Android Pay a little bit because that's new. But so far, like, you haven't really heard a lot. I mean, there's a rumor that Photos is going to get revamped soon, um, partially at least anyway, with with uh, collaborative uh, galleries. So, like, you and I could go somewhere and take pictures and they'd upload to the same gallery for both of us, which is pretty cool. And maybe that's one of the features they'll talk about there. But, yeah, so far I'm going into the event expecting um, Nexus. 6P, 5X, Chromecast 2, which uh, sounds like it's got better Wi-Fi, a couple colors and stuff like that, but I don't really know what else to expect. And then Chromecast Audio, which is apparently a way to connect, say, older speakers. Um, but what I was trying to figure out is what makes this different than any other Bluetooth hub that you can buy for, say, 20 bucks. Connect your speakers and then connect to that and you can play. And one rumor suggested that there's multi-room support. So maybe you have a couple of them linked up, and then you can have speakers throughout your house that are connected for much cheaper than, say, a pair of Wi-Fi speakers or something like a Sonos or Bluetooth. Um, and then Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Like maybe we'll hear the release date. Maybe the maybe the final builds will hit the Nexus 6 and stuff also on that day. But really, it's like that's okay. Those are our that's our focus. But where else could Google go? And that's why I was saying maybe photos, maybe they talk about payments, maybe they get into Android TV a little bit. I'd like to hear a little update on that end, especially now that Apple TV is coming. Um, and I know that it's already new. I mean, it's still pretty new, but we could still hear an update on like new apps coming. I mean, I feel like Android TV is still almost like that Android Wear beta experience. Like there's some good apps, but it's not, it's not huge yet. And I think they need to take it that way. You know, and I, I'm so thankful that they're doing the Chromecast and other colors because, you know, that device that you <laughs> see the one time <laughs> before you plug it into the back of your television and never see it again. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, the rumors are showing yellow, red, and a regular black, and they look like a little hockey puck or, like, as if they went and spent time on, like, how it should look. That doesn't matter at all. Like, the little dongle's perfect. Just throw it behind your TV. You're like you said. You yeah, never you see never see it again. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I can't wrap my head around that either. Yeah, it's like, oh, let, let's spend you know time working on that because you know we need to know what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a question that a reader sent in via Twitter a couple weeks ago that definitely relates to what we're seeing here today, and this followed up on the iPhone event uh, yeah. from Connor Furlong. Do you think it's becoming increasingly less likely to be amazed? And when was the last time something did amaze you? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, well, and that, that goes back to just leaks, too. Like, it's hard to go in amazed when you've already heard about it or reported on rumors and stuff for months. Like, if Apple came at us at a left field with something, you know, like say I don't I don't know say the car the iPad Air three yeah like yeah an iPad Air three something like that or the Apple cars I mean be like whoa but yeah it's increasingly hard because of that and I also think because of expectations you start to set things a little high um, all of us do I think you know 
whether it's Apple or Samsung or anybody else. I'll say the last time I was amazed um, was probably it's it's usually when I look at Samsung's new screens. To be honest, I think that's what on their phones. I'm always just like, whoa, you know, like that's pretty cool. If we, if we're talking hardware, specifically hardware and specifically on a phone, I think that's where I would I'm pretty amazed. Right. I think a lot of the problem is that we're in a very iterative stage of phone development at this point. You know, yes, everyone's throwing a fingerprint reader in. I don't really consider that that innovative, no matter who did it first. I don't care. It's it's not that big of a thing. We're stuck basically in the same form factor. Every phone is a black slab. You know, yes, sometimes there's other colors. Um, <laughs> but every phone's a slab. There's not anything super interesting going on. You know, the, the last company that tried to do something interesting and will, as soon as I say it, we'll all know how well it did was the Fire Phone. <laughs> you know, with the, the stupid camera set up in every corner and, oh, look, you, you can look at the picture from different angles. Oh, <laughs> boy. Um, there, there's nothing super innovative going on. You know, you, you get little tweaks to how the camera works, you know, whether it, you know, it can be, you know, oh, it rotates this way, or you can rotate it to the front for super, you know, sexy selfies. Right. You know, it's, there's not anything. I, I don't think it's even just the rumors. It's just that there's not anything new being done. Right. I mean, I think we're spoiled too. Like everything is so great. And then it just gets like, Slightly better, slightly better, slightly better. But if we were to step back, say, four years, and then pop in and look at the Galaxy Note 5, we'd be like, whoa, like that. I yes. can't even wrap my head around that. And, yes. and you could do the same with the Galaxy Note 4. And you're like, whoa. But if you went from Note 4 to Note 5, you're kind of like, oh, but, uh, but what about the removable battery and the micro SD card slot? And that's where we start to get spoiled. And you're like, wait a second, like we should still – consider where we were just four years ago and and that's the hard thing too is that when us you know we're following it every day our our fans i think our readers are following it every day and so for all of us it's sort of like okay yeah like which one am i going to spend my money on i don't you know maybe the camera is most important or maybe that it's made out of metal is most important and that's what it comes down to versus these large leaps that we've had i mean if you if you really look at it like we're using our phones for payments, whether it's Samsung or Apple or anybody now LG um, with Android Pay. Like that's something that's just incredible to me. Where you just walk up and, and pay with your phone or even your watch. And um, I was talking to Brandon, one of our writers, the other day, and he was like, "Whatever happened to like those tiny phones?" And I said, "You know, do you remember this such and such phone? I forget what it was called, but it was like a lipstick can on or like a lipstick tube on Verizon." made by Samsung it was the funniest looking phone. And that's when like, you know, the differentiator wasn't displays and RAM and metal bodies. It was like the actual form factor, which sort of goes back to what you're talking about. Like the, they seem to make advancements in how the phones looked back then versus, you know. Well, let's not forget that Brandon has a definite issue with any phone of any size. Right. <laughs> well, and you know what's funny? I was just thinking about these differences um, way back when. This is probably five years ago, four years ago, five years ago. Samsung launched a phone called the Continuum on Verizon, and it had a little ticker screen at the bottom that had its own area for applications and stuff like that. And it wasn't very popular. And now I'm just covering you know these rumors yesterday that another staffer, Jacob, was writing about LG – creating this phone with a ticker on it. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, we saw this five years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah like you were saying, Brandon has a hard time loving phones. <laughs> well, no, it's more specifically phablets. He is not a phablet fan by any <clears throat> That's right. imagination. <laughs> he loves phones. He just hates phablets. Yes. But um, I, I still laugh about the time he strapped a, the original Galaxy Note to his wrist. Oh yeah, <laughs> to uh, try to simulate what a, a phone uh, watch would be like, but um, 
much. That was also uh, that was also the time of the great photo gallery where he went and bought everyday products down at the Seven Eleven and brought them back to the office and, and compared them to size them. comparisons. <laughs> Here it is next to a pop tart. Here it yeah. is next to a piece yeah. of pizza. Yeah, pizza. I was going to say. Oh my! Anyway, um, so the other event coming up is LG, who mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure why they're making an event out of this. I know. I was trying to figure that out too. It could be any number of things. You know, it could be discussion about U.S. carriers for this Nexus 5X or something like that. But I think mainly that's going to be at the Google event. Then we had the GPad 2 or whatever was just introduced in Berlin. Um, maybe they'll talk about U.S. availability because that just launched. Um, and and then I'm just trying to think like it could be. Maybe, I mean, there's rumors they're building like the G5 or whatever, right? The, their next flagship, whatever that is. But it seems to me maybe a little too soon. And I don't know that it's going to be that that big of an event, but it also could be something huge like that. Yeah. And then we, of course, we also have Microsoft coming up on October 6th. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, good grief. But yeah. um, Microsoft, from what we're hearing, it sounds like it's going to be primarily the Surface 4. Yeah. Well, Surface Pro 4. And then, and then the phone. surface yeah and then the phones i think too I, I, see i haven't been positive on the phones being there <clears throat> oh i think they'll be there because it's about time they said fall and we've seen plenty of leaks I, they need to get something out the door i think they'll be there well at least these companies are being like amazon with like oh hey look we have released new fires yeah yeah right <laughs> They just recently, how many products were there? Like seven? I don't know. It was ridiculous. The Fire HD 8, the Fire HD 10, they, the new kids tablet. They had the new Fire TV. They had the Fire TV gaming edition. The Fire new Fire TV stick. New Fire um, TV stick. And then they also had the tablet you could buy in a six pack. Yeah, the $50 tablet. That's seven. That was a crazy day. And the, <laughs> like nothing, like no press conference just here no, the, those, I kind of like that way. and, and they didn't even send way. out like press releases you could find yeah. them if you know knew where to go look but it was just like we all went on to amazon for whatever reason and we're like oh hey look there's new stuff, <laughs> new stuff. <laughs> which <Okay>. is great <laughs> i i kind of like that versus these huge press events and it's just like a zoo I agree. I, I'm not a huge fan of the, the big press events. The only, I just wish, you know, even 30 minutes early, send us the press release to, so yeah. we can get ready. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, and for anyone that was listening earlier, Todd was saying something about, you know, us prepping posts for the Google event. I, I just want to explain real quickly. We have zero advanced knowledge. Mm -hmm. What we do is we prepare what we call skeletons which are simply we put in the headline Nexus 6X, you know, is announced. And that's all that's there. It's just a ready built post. So I, I didn't want anyone thinking that we were like sitting on a whole bunch of knowledge. I, we wish we were. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, but <laughs> that's something we do before every major event because it just makes it that much quicker for us on the day. Yeah, easier. Especially if we if we know like five X and six P seem pretty locked down right now. Yeah, sorry, six P. So we would prepare up I didn't even catch that you said something else. I, I said six so X. Oh. <laughs> so we would prepare that ahead of time because yeah, it seems like yeah. it'll be announced. Yes, nothing like getting ready for events. <laughs> it's our favorite pastime around here. Yeah. But uh yeah, Sachin Bahal uh asks uh you know what we think of the phones but more specifically which we've already somewhat addressed that but what could the letter stand for and i'm curious about that because we really have no idea what those letters mean yeah no i don't know yeah i i i guess we'll find out or maybe they just wanted to denote them as something different i'm not sure yeah, they seem like odd, random choices. I mean, the Nexus Five, they need to distinguish it in some in some way. But I think that was a really popular phone, so they're trying to take advantage of that again by, you know, releasing a new Nexus Five, and they they can't call it the Nexus Five Two, right? I, mean, I guess like, <laughs> yeah. 
wouldn't be the first time a company's done something like that. And so that's why I'm guessing the X is there. And the P, uh, you got me. For perfection. Yeah, plus <laughs> phablet. I don't know. Well, let's kick off the uh, question and answer sh section with the uh, most upvoted question from Brazen Franco. <laughs> uh, what did you return this week, Todd? I have not returned anything in a while, but I did just <gasps> buy the Amazon Echo, and I connected it to um, one, two, three, four, five Philips Hue lights, um, which has been awesome. So I have those all connected to my phone. The lights all connected to my phones, but I can also control them from the Echo. So actually, let's let's try it right now for those watching. Alexa, turn on my living room lights. Um, can you guys? Yeah, see, it's, it's on. Alexa, wow. turn off the living room lights. There you go. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'm still not convinced I need an echo in my life, but. No, but it's kind of. Yeah. Uh, oh, Mark Eric Lane has a great question uh, referring back to uh, the Google portion. What about the Nexus player? Will we see a new enhanced Nexus player two this year? I want to buy one, but I will wait if a new one is coming. We have heard nothing. Yeah, I don't think so. I think the Nexus player was sort of, um, I don't want to say proof of concept, but like a white box, like here's what you can do with Android TV. Here's what we did. Now go make your own. And that's why you have NVIDIA and other companies making their own. So I think, I don't think there's going to be a player too. If anything, maybe some Android TV talk on updates. But we'll yeah. see. I mean, last year's when they basically introduced, I think, the new the Android TV interface and Nexus Player, and so we saw that for the first time. And I'd like to see some changes there. Uh, uh, this is uh, totally off topic, but from Brazen Franco, since I had the exact same question of what was happening when we started the show, uh, new place, <laughs> Todd? <laughs> <laughs> no. I just flipped my living room, so I moved my desk to the other side. Yeah. Don't worry, Brazen. I also went, what the? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the window's on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, from Michael Vassell, uh, what do you think will happen to Google Wallet since Android Pay is now out? We kind of know what's happening, but it seems odd that both products still exist. Yeah, well, they're going to keep both. They've already sort of talked about this. Google Wallet is now purely for sending and receiving money to friends, sort of what you would do with Facebook or Venmo or PayPal. So, like, send Sean $25 for pizza, and then you cash out, which is nice. I mean, I love Venmo, so it, if Google Wallet catches on among some people, that's awesome. But most of my friends use Venmo, so there's no reason for me to switch. And then Android Pay is just focused on, what Google Wallet used to be, which is, you know, your loyalty cards, your credit and debit cards, and making payments in uh, retail stores. Yeah, I'd, I'm not quite sure why they didn't just combine them. Yeah, well, I think that's what they wanted to do originally, but then it, maybe it got confusing. And then now this is kind of confusing. <laughs> yes, because having two separate products that both relate to finances is, is not confusing at all. Yeah, it should be called... I, like, wouldn't it make sense if Android Pay was the one to send money to your friends because that's the one that you're paying them with and receiving? And then Google Wallet's the wallet you take out in stores? I don't know. Oh, what do we know about marketing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, from Jesper Rex, what do you think of the LG V10? The dual screen seems weird. Yes, it does. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about earlier that um, it's it's been done before. Samsung had the dual display on the Samsung Continuum, which launched on Verizon in the United States, and it just had that ticker on the bottom. So this could be, I mean, it looks like the same idea. It's just uh, the ticker is up top, but we'll see what they do to uh, to take advantage of it. But, you know, opening it up to third parties and stuff seems to be a value add to these kind of additional screens, and then developers never do anything with them. I, I mean, excuse me, look how many apps are on the edge screens on Samsung's phone today. I mean, those are relatively popular phones and there's like nothing from third party vendors, like maybe five apps, 10 apps at the most. So it's, it really depends on what LG does with it that makes it compelling. I, I totally agree. Uh, from Session Bahala, what do you guys think of iOS 9 so far if you guys updated? Yes, we, everybody updated within seconds of the well, as quickly as we could with all yeah, the things that were happening. <laughs> um, 
I would say my uh, there's one thing I don't like about it, and that's when you do the double tap on the home button to close apps. I don't like the new format. Yeah, I don't like that either. I I really preferred the old format where everything was just this app, this app, this app. Now this window tiled thing is weird, and yeah, I, I'm not a fan. But uh, it, it seems quicker. I'm not really sure about the battery life yet. Um, I do like the fact that at least on my iPad Air that they changed how many icons were on each page of a folder. Um, otherwise, I mean, it's it's an iOS update. Yeah, I haven't really found a lot that I felt like I needed. Um, I guess it's nice to swipe down and see like my most frequently used apps. So like when I was ordering from Starbucks today, I just I found that there because I open it every day. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't feel you know as drastic as other stuff. But I'm looking forward to Hey Siri on the new iPhones. Um, I think that should be pretty cool, where you can say that at any time. With these, yeah. you have to have, hey, Siri, uh, the phone has to be plugged in. Yeah, it, which, thank goodness I have my headphones on, because both my iPad and my iPhone are charging behind me. <laughs> and uh, Joey is a big fan of when on conference calls with me, just shouting, hey, Siri, and making them go off. <laughs> uh, from Brezen Franco, for one ninety nine, what's the better purchase, NVIDIA Shield TV or Apple TV? I'll take this one. <laughs> um, I'm going to be very blunt. We're, we're big fans of the folks over at NVIDIA. They're, they're great people. They work with us. I was sent an NVIDIA Shield TV to review. I did the review. I was not impressed. Now, that being said, it was not the hardware. The hardware was gorgeous. Android TV is not a complete platform yet. It is not easy to navigate. It is not easy to organize whatsoever. You have really no say in how it's organized. It's very clunky. Um, Apple TV, I'm not the biggest fan of, but I would choose the Apple TV over the NVIDIA Shield TV any day of the week. Uh, also, uh, there's more apps that's easier to navigate. Uh, you know, With the upgrades coming with the new one, I think it's going to be even easier. Thank goodness we're getting rid of the old remote. <laughs> yes. uh, that, that That is the... It's somewhere here on my... Right here. Th this is the worst remote ever designed by a human being. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, I the NVIDIA Shield TV I like because I spend a lot of... For whatever reason, I've just gravitated towards Android for my multimedia stuff. So, like, my movie rentals and stuff are through Google Play Store. And I think that's a pretty... It's good there and using your voice to navigate through movies and stuff like that um, is really easy and it works well and I do like the option right now it's free the PC streaming through Shield TV if you have um, a fast enough router so like the games and stuff that they give you for free you can play that's pretty cool that, but that like, part I agree is cool but I think long term Apple TV just because um, it's open to more developers. Or actually, I take that back. Developers have access to Android TV as well. There's just not a lot of apps that are made for it. I think yeah. Apple developers, iOS developers, are going to take more advantage of the Apple TV. I agree, and they they already have. So, and again, the, if it was the Nexus player, you, you know, no, no matter what, what any product running Android TV right now, I'm just not a fan of. I just don't think the system is robust enough. Yeah, if you're going to buy any Android TV, though, I would get the Shield. I that I agree with you. Yes, if you if you are set on getting an Android TV device, then yes, the Nvidia Shield would be the one to get. Yeah, I do agree with you. Uh, from Damon Sanchez, what do you think about the BlackBerry Venice? Is this coming up on being the most leaked phone in the history of man? Yeah, I'm wondering when it's going to finally make its debut. At, at this point, it's, it's going to be the most anticlimactic release. Yeah, like, oh, okay. I mean, John Chen said that they've looked at it, but they're not going to do it unless it really makes financial sense for them, which is a wise move. If nobody's going to buy it, then don't make it. But if it does hit the market, I'm very compelled to try a BlackBerry running Android. I, I am too, but I, I'm sorry. I don't... 
I don't put a lot of credence in what John Chen said simply because like, you know, somebody was spotted using it out in the wild at the Toronto International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. It's shown up so many places. We know there's a bunch of these things running around. Right. You know, th this is not a, oh, we looked at it and thought about it. No, you're in some form of production. <laughs> yeah. It, you, you do not have this many units running around the earth if you're just looking at it. Right, right. Good point. Yeah, so I, I just I, I have a real problem with that that line he said. But I'm wondering if when though, and if they're gonna make a big deal out of it too. Like, is he just gonna hit their website as a couple of devices have, or is there gonna be a big like Well, I also think at this point it would be silly to announce it prior to the Google event. You know, why launch it with anything less than marshmallow? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, I think we may still see it this year. I, I'm convinced it's coming. I just don't know when. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see. It could, be, it could be one of those things that just, you know, like tomorrow. Cross yeah. Fire. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get it. But, uh, boy, we have a ton of questions. So let me uh, see if we can't uh, speed up here a little bit. We've got another streaming question I did want to get to because uh, I haven't given an update on this recently. Uh, from Session Bahal, hey, Sean, how is your cord cutting going to affect your watching the new TV shows that are premiering this week and returning shows? Uh, also, have any of you guys watched the Limitless TV show? If so, what did you think of it? Well, first off, I never saw the Limitless movie, so I'm not overly excited about the TV show. I might check it out at some point. Uh as for how it's impacting, you know, how cord cutting, for those that don't know, I cut the cord back in May. I am, I'm completely streaming now. It's really not that big of a difference. I just, I watch everything a day later. You know, uh, yes, I, I already had a Hulu subscription, which I did up my Hulu subscription when they announced the no ads version. I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> Four extra dollars a month. My time is worth that much. Oh, yes. Um and then I also, uh, CBS is the biggest pain in the behind. I, I watch four CBS shows. So I had to buy CBS All Access, which luckily is only $5.99 a month. But still, it's like, just join Hulu. Will, right. you, will you please? <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it, it's not really impacting my television watching at all. The, the only show that I could not find on a streaming service at this time and as a long, long time fan, I just went ahead and bought the season was uh, the new season of Doctor Who, which I bought on Amazon. But uh, that was the only show from the the new season that I couldn't find through my various services. So it's going great. I just I watch everything a day later. It's just like DVRing it and just time shifting it. It's working out for me. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. <laughs> brazen franco is the iphone really rose gold to me it looks like standard pink <laughs> it's standard pink yeah that thing's pink <laughs> it's, it's pink i don't i don't know where we got in this world that we have to call pink rose gold it sounds fancier i guess it, it's pink yeah get out of here I, i'm sorry you you can try to tell me all day long that it's not pink but it's pink <laughs> Uh, from such and Bahal, do any of you guys use any launchers on your Android devices? If so, which ones? I, I just use Google now. Use the Google now launcher. I think that's what John prefers to. I use Apex, um, on all my phones after I review them. Yes. They make that very clear. We never, we never install third party launchers until post reviews time i've tried to jump through hoops to install sense on some phones too though because i really like it but uh and you can do it it's just kind of a pain in the butt yeah so well, i usually go apex and i do apex because um i mean that's just the first premium one that i bought um and then i, I like to have as many icons sort of on the home screen as possible so well, i can show you a phone that needs to be restarted i don't have a phone on me um, but they're all small right along the bottom so I can fit as many on the screen as I can. Cool. Uh, from Michael Vassell, uh, do you think the surface phones will be a hit? History says no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want them to be. Uh, other side. I really want them to be, 
but uh, they, uh, they have such tough competition to go against right now that it's going to be tough. But the, the nice thing is, if Microsoft can show that developers are actually creating apps for Windows 10 that run on these phones also through um, Continuum or Content, no, Continuum is what they call it, Continuity is Apple. Continuum, where it basically just scales the app down to that screen, then that's really cool because then you can plug it in using presumably USB-C or some kind of other wireless display standard, and then you've got the full app on another screen. Now, that's cool to me, but we'll see if they actually take off. I, I'm still just waiting on the Kin 3. On the uh, Kin 3? <laughs> yeah. I might be waiting a while on that. Yeah. Uh, from Bresen Franco, uh, what do you think of Apple's patent on the shaved down 3.5 millimeter jack? Wouldn't it be simpler to just use the 2.5 millimeter audio jack or at that point just use the lightning port? And isn't the race to this phone becoming ridiculous? Yes, it is becoming ridiculous. Um, I think the if they go with the shave down 3.5 millimeter, which if in case anyone doesn't know, there was a patent filed. Uh, wasn't it back like in 2011? Yeah, 2011. So I don't. I'm yeah, not... that patent's been sitting around for a while. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it came to light that it's a shave down 3.5 millimeter, which means that your standard headphone jack will not fit into the this jack which means selling a lot of adapters, <laughs> a whole yeah. lot of adapters. But as Brazen mentioned, since the time of that being filed, the lightning port came around. Mm -hmm. I think that at some point Apple will do away with the 3.5 millimeter and just go with lightning. Yeah. That to me makes the most sense or just Bluetooth. Like that's one of the, you know, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth direct to a Bluetooth set of headphones. Like, why rely on either one but yeah i think if you needed something it would probably just go through lightning but i mean like keep the phone this thick if you're making these kind of advancements and whatever space you have left fill it with battery leave the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack i don't get the problem yeah exactly uh for michael the sale uh hey sean when do you think the ken 3 is coming out <laughs> my fingers are crossed man yeah. My fingers are really crossed. <laughs> if nobody, for those of you that may not remember the Kin 1 and 2. I have them in a drawer back there. I'll dig them out for one episode. You've got to take those out. What did, how many did they sell? It was like a Five? couple. <laughs> it, no, it was like a couple hundred thousand each. It was oh. like the worst phone, phone launch ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, it was. Oh, the Kin 1 and 2 were... <laughs> so that, when we say Microsoft has a history of problems with phones... Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, Windows Mobile was hugely popular. I know. I, I, one and two. All I can remember is when they launched the Kin 1 and 2, you couldn't turn on a TV show without those commercials running. <laughs> you know, how much money... Did... For like four months. Oh, it was unbelievable. Oh. Talk about a disaster. Yep. Uh, we got a lot more questions here. I'm trying to get through as many as we can. From uh, Soji Ujubli, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Google Photos updates. Maybe. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Maybe we'll see it there. Maybe it'll just be updated as it usually is. But I, I'd like to see it there. I mean, I love Google Photos. It's, it's where I put every single photo I have, and I love that it creates these auto awesome images and um yeah I, I guess the latest rumor suggests that we might have collaborative galleries which would be really fun super interesting question from chris Patton. um what dual sim unlocked phone would you recommend zen phone 2 alcatel idle 3 zomi mi4c or any other options is it possible to use a data only sim from t-mobile on a phone and use a voice text sim from cricket i don't That's, think so i think I you don't... can only have one active I don't know how that works. I don't know either. I, that is one thing I wish you know, more and more people are carrying two phones because, you know, they have their work phone and they have their personal phone. Somebody released dual SIM phones in this country. <laughs> I don't get it. I guess you, I, I don't think you could do that, but maybe, I don't know. I've never used a dual SIM phone to be, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I, 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 out of those options though, 
Show me seems to be popular. I've just never used it. I really like the Alcatel Idol 3, though. It's probably worth considering. Mm -hmm. Chris, that's a super interesting question. We Unfortunately, we just don't have that much access to dual SIM phones, so we've never gotten to try that concept. But it's an interesting idea. Yeah. I always thought, and I'm probably wrong, that you kind of had to have one or the other, but that doesn't really make sense for people that share phones, so it must be both. But I don't know that you can granularly leave data on one and voice and voice and text on the other plausibly, I guess. Yeah. Uh, hi guys. I, uh, this is from Phineas. Uh, hi guys. I have a iPhone six plus. Is it worth it to upgrade to the iPhone six S plus? Where are two minds on this? Yeah. <laughs> You're not doing it. And I, am. I, you're doing it. I'm not <laughs> doing it. Um, my feeling is that there was not enough there. Yes. 3d touch is interesting. Yes, faster processor. I can live without those things. Yeah. Um, I, I'm i just going to wait for the iPhone 7. You know, fingers crossed. After the iPad Air 3 disaster, I don't know <laughs> what's happening anymore. It's not an iPhone 7. It, maybe it could be the iPhone 6S double plus. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not convinced I needed an upgrade, Todd. Well, Todd's Todd. I don't know that I. Well, yeah, I was going to say I'm not the regular consumer, so I'm doing it for a number of reasons. Yeah. A, I feel like it would be weird to cover mobile news all all the time and not actually have the the Apple flagship on my desk with all the other flagships. But also, um, the upgrade program was compelling to me. So, you know, I pay Apple monthly, and then at the end, I give the phone back, and then I get the iPhone 7 and continue on with my life. That one seems, that seems pretty cool. Um, and then I was thinking, well, then I could just sell this and maybe buy the iPad Air 2 or something, because I, I was thinking about grabbing one of those anyway. But I don't know. I mean, I was like, either buy it now or wait two months, and then I'm going to buy it then anyway. So let's just buy it now. <laughs> now, why would you buy an iPad Air 2 at this juncture? Because the iPad Pro starts at seven ninety nine, that's too expensive to me. I have the iPad Mini two, and I was thinking, well, that could use an upgrade because it's getting a little sluggish at this point. So I could go with the iPad four, or just get the larger screen because I haven't owned a larger screen iPad ever. Really? Price, yeah, I've always had the Mini. I did not know that. That's interesting. Um, Okay, there was one other question. I, guys, I'm sorry, we're going to have a bunch of unanswered questions. You guys have had great questions this week, though. Um, oh, shoot, I can't find it right now. Uh, ah, there it is, from Brazen Franco. Is the tablet market fading away like the netbooks with phablets becoming the most popular devices and the iPad remaining the only relevant one? <sighs> Tough question. That is a... Certainly... Yeah, the upgrade, the upgrade market has sort of disappeared because I mean I think that's why we didn't see Apple introduce an iPad Air three. Like, <clears throat> they they probably didn't see a huge number of updates from the Air to the Air two, and so they were like, well, why would we release the Air three? So they released a different form factor, form factor, the iPad Pro, and probably hoping that oh, this is distinguishing enough that people are going to be like, I need that one because it's different. It's got that bigger screen. I've never had that before. And I've got a pen, and I've got a keyboard, which reminds me a lot of the Surface. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, here, here's the thing, though. And I, 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 we don't know what the reasoning was for no iPad Air 3. I think they overlooked the idea, though. Their, uh, iPad Air 2 was just an iterative update. It was not major. I had every intention of getting an Air 3. I have a feeling a lot of original iPad Air owners were thinking that. So now they're assuming that we're just going to go, oh, well, we got no choice but to pick up the, the behemoth, <laughs> which is not as user-friendly. I, I am a huge tablet user. I, 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 am the, I am the poster boy for tablet usage. And I just don't want to carry around a 12.8-inch tablet. Yeah. To me, I, I and the fact that it's got the faster processor, right? So like that is compelling, but I didn't see what I was saying on earlier podcast episodes. Is this a tablet that I could really work from? That's different from the iPad Air 2. Like it's got a bigger screen, but I don't need that to do. I mean, I could do that. I could 
do the same stuff on my iPad mini, aside from the multitasking, but there aren't the third-party app support that I would need for that because I would want Google Hangouts on one and whatever I'm writing in Safari on the other. So, like, I could do all of that on the iPad Air, too. Why would I get this other tablet? Because it has a keyboard, but I can buy a, a cheaper keyboard for the iPad Air, too, because it has a pencil. Well, I don't need that at all. I've never used a pencil. In oh, fact, I, I actually just... Well, and don't I, forget the pencil is a... a add-on purchase right exactly uh, yeah the, the total cost comes up to what like 1300 bucks it, it's ridiculous it's ridiculous but speaking to brazen's more general question do we think the tablet market as a whole is disappearing that's a really interesting question um yeah we we've seen that sales are dropping however they're still selling tens of millions of tablets but yeah. But, you know, as I've said before, when I'm on a plane, I always you know look around like mid-flight, see what everybody's using. I don't see other tablets other than iPad. I, I once in a blue moon I see a Samsung. I once I saw an Asus transformer. I was like, kudos to you, because uh, I love those tablets. Yeah, they're great tablets. Yeah, they were. Um, so I don't know. I. We all dreamed of the day tablets would come along. They got here, and I just don't know if they didn't do exactly what we hoped they would do, and we lost interest in them, or if this is just possibly a lull. I don't know. I think the tablet market is in a very odd space right now. Yeah. Well, I think also, like, how many people do you know that don't have some sort of tablet? And among those, how many of them actually want another one, a new one? I have a yeah. bunch of friends who have older iPads or Nexus 7s, which is really popular. I mean, I still love that Nexus 7. And and they're like, well, well I, I shared the Best Buy sale yesterday with them where they knocked $175 off all the iPad mini 3s. And they were like, well, <laughs> there you go, the HP touchpad. Right, that's what it was. Touch me, and uh, on my desk. All like, I wonder what I have on my desk. And they were all like, "Well, why would I get another tablet? There, you know, this is just fine." So that's the thing. I think that's the problem is people just don't see the need to get these new tablets. Yeah. No, I, I picked up the touchpad on um, the fire sale, and I keep it around. It, it in the building I'm in, we have cement floors everywhere. So if we need to walk around with a tablet at the time we grab the touchpad because we don't care if it gets broken. <laughs> that, that's our, oh, we don't care what happens to a tablet. I wish iPads allowed a cursor too. I could really do a lot more work if I had a cursor. Yeah, I agree. Android, Android supports it just fine with a Bluetooth mouse. Yeah. Well, folks, we're going to have to bring the show to a close. We've actually run a little bit over and we, we still have a ton of questions. I always feel bad when we can't get to them all, but thank you all for joining us and asking all those questions. We will be back next week after all the Google craziness and what's happening. Mm -hmm. But as always, we do appreciate you finding us on iTunes and rating and review us. That does really help out the show. You can also find us on Pocket Cast. You can find subscribe via rss feed or you can find us on the stitcher app which means you can listen to us anytime anywhere anywhere you can find podcasts you can find the techno buffalo show until next week i'm sean ani i'm the editor-in-chief of techno buffalo and i've been joined by deputy managing editor todd hazelton bye everybody till next week take it easy everyone bye bye